We begin our discussion tonight with former police chief Daniel Hahn, a Sacramento native. Hahn grew up in Oak Park. He worked with the Sacramento Police Department for more than 20 years, served as chief from 2017 until he retired at the end of last year. Chief Hahn, we're so grateful to have you here joining us in Thanks studio. Appreciate me. it. I want to start with the reaction, your reaction to the reaction to the shooting, if that makes sense, because it seems like when we have instances like this, the narratives come out. One side is saying, gun control, gun control. The other side is saying stricter laws would have prevented this. This is a gang problem. This is a funding problem. What do you see is the problem? Well, first of all, what you just described is same old, same old, and why we continue to be in these situations every couple months or every couple years where we have a mass shooting or a horrific shooting where a small child gets killed or something else, because these are not single issue solutions. Um, that are needed. And so one side says we need more gun laws. Well, the guns they were carrying were already illegal. Mm -hmm. One side says we need more police. One side says we need no police. We need all social workers. We need all community groups. We need all of that at the same time working collaboratively together is what we need. That's what we need for the short term to make people feel safe, to hold people accountable for this shooting. But the long term is really to change the issues in our community, poverty, the lack of educational resources, the things that in some neighborhoods causes people to lose hope and drives them to things like gangs. Is it a race personal responsibility? No, they still mm -hmm. need to have personal responsibility. But you don't see the gangs in neighborhoods that are thriving. You see the gangs in the neighborhoods that don't have jobs, don't have economic vitality. And you take the neighborhood I grew up in during the crack epidemic, that's the start of gangs in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. um, and that neighborhood didn't used to be like that. Wow. Old Park used to be a thriving neighborhood. I never knew that growing up. I always mm -hmm. thought the neighborhood was always like that. And so what we took out of neighborhoods, we can put back. All right, I, I want to ask you, I was going to read a tweet from you from a couple of days ago where you really sort of got into a little bit of the meat of discussing what a collaborative effort was and what a collaborative solution really meant. So obviously to collaborate means to gather from a whole bunch of different sources. What are the most important sources in making a collaboration here that's going to make a difference? Because you said, you know, something else you said is that, you know, if, if we respond typically the way that we typically have to this before, we're just going to see this happening over and over and over again. So we have to respond differently and that is by collaboration. So what is it specifically in terms of that collaboration that you think is going to make some sort of a difference? Yeah, great question. I think, first of all, we have to break that into two different categories. One, the short term, and then two, the long term. The short term is exactly what's going on. An investigation where all hands on deck, the community's helping, the police department, the detectives are all working, and there's already multiple people in custody, and I'm right. sure there'll be more to come. And additional resources downtown so people feel safe. Um, the businesses feel safe and people start going about uh, the business that they need to do in our city instead of going somewhere else and being scared to be here. That's the short term. The, but short term only gets us through this incident. Right. It doesn't lessen the chance of the next incident right. happening. That is where we need to work in our communities and build up our communities, do the same things in the Oak Parks, the Meadowviews, the Del Paso Heights that we do in the North Natomas. Right, mm -hmm. all those where things we, are that, that take more time. Absolutely, yeah. they take more time. We didn't get here overnight, so we're not gonna get out of it overnight, but we really oftentimes haven't even started. When's the last time you heard us economically investing in Del Paso Heights? Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, and I want to ask you one question, just Go sort of bouncing yeah. off of that a little bit. Uh, as part of that collaboration, it's, it seems like law enforcement needs to evolve here as well, along with that. So it, I feel like we're sort of sitting at a point where we're at an extreme, right? We're at, at an extreme where people say more police, more police, more police, zero tolerance and all of that. And then we're on the other side of the th that thing, depending on what's going on, I say, no, no, no more police, defunding, that whole concept. So now neither one works. And so the evolution of the police force and, and, and sheriff and, and all of that, that has to evolve as part of that collaboration, I would assume, as well, right? The extremes never work. So the extremes are what keep us in this, but it makes us feel better for a few mm -hmm. weeks mm -hmm. and a few months. So we've just gone through a period where there's a lot of people calling for drastic reductions in law enforcement or eliminating law enforcement altogether. But when I was growing up in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, during the crack epidemic, that's where zero tolerance came, that's where three strikes came, that's where going to neighborhoods, zero tolerance, anything you do, you will get arrested, you'll do a significant amount of time. That actually dropped crime 
drastically over the following three decades. But it also further eroded and destroyed the relationship between law enforcement and the community that already wasn't good from mm -hmm. previous right, efforts. Right. And so then crime goes down, we get comfortable, now we want to lessen law enforcement, we want to uh, not have as much accountability, and then we end up where we're here. So guess where we're going now? We're going right. to go back to the three strikes, heavy enforcement, zero tolerance, right. and we keep going from one extreme to the other, and it takes us away from what you talked about a minute ago. Do we need to get better in law enforcement? Absolutely. Are there better ways to do things? Absolutely. But we don't spend much time working on those because we're on the extremes fighting on right. whichever side right. we're on. Do you feel like it's a disconnection too within communities? I mean, not to use this cliche phrase, but we're all in this together. That communities feel, you know, does East Sacramento know what it's like in Del Paso Heights? Know what it's like in Meadowview? Does Land Park, do you feel like maybe if communities in Sacramento were more connected, there would be more of this collaborative effort to get to the root of these problems and it wouldn't no. just be this initial reaction, the shock and awe, oh my gosh, there was this mass shooting in Sacramento, I don't feel safe, we gotta do something, I'm passionate and then, and, and be, to be honest too, you know, people might hear, well, you know, it was gang related and that's what happens with rival gangs and you sort of just kind of forget about it. No, I don't think people in other neighborhoods know how it is to grow up there mm -hmm. or live mm -hmm. there, but why should they? Mm -hmm. How would they? Mm -hmm. they they're not there right. and so i don't hold i don't blame people for right. not understanding how it is to grow up somewhere they didn't grow mm -hmm. up it's good for you you grew right. up in a in a neighborhood that had all those resources mm -hmm. and all those sort of things that's why i think these sort of conversations because i think there's a lot of people in all communities that would do the right thing if they knew what the challenge was mm -hmm. but too many times people say this is america everybody can make it but if you go to the neighborhoods and you look at you know, whether it's Grand High School versus Rockland High School, mm -hmm. there's a difference. Yeah. There are sure. more resources sure. at the one high school than there is yeah. in the other. Yeah. There's, I, when I was nine years old, I witnessed a murder in front of my house where a man got shot multiple times. That's not normal for a nine-year-old. Mm -hmm. The good thing about me is uh, my mom was in our house and our home was a very, very stable home that helped me deal with all the things that I saw outside of our house, drug dealing, prostitution, all those sort of things every day. Whereas some of my friends their house was some of the same mm -hmm. and they had trauma inside their house so it wasn't helping them deal with the trauma outside their house and then we wonder why people join a gang when gangs are on the rise when hate crime is on the rise when hate membership is on the rise society is lacking if you look throughout history the Great Depression and other times when the hardships were high that's when membership and hate groups grew that's now when gangs are growing gangs are growing again now um, things are tough and we have to ensure that we take care of all of our neighborhoods not just um, with law enforcement but you know investing in all of our neighborhoods the way we do other neighborhoods Wow. Okay, we, we need to take a quick break. Uh, former police chief, Sacramento police chief Daniel Hahn speaking with us. Obviously, not just about specifically what mm -hmm. happened uh, over the weekend on Sunday in downtown Sacramento, but the potential changes that, that, that we see that could be put in place uh, to make sure that this kind of thing, at least we can lessen uh, the number of occurrences where this happens, not just in California, mm -hmm. uh, but nationwide. So hope it, stick with us for two minutes. We're going to take a quick break, uh, and we'll be right back and continue our conversation with former Sacramento police chief uh, Daniel Hahn.